All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Haunters Talk Podcast. I'm Justin, a.k.a. Cavities. Right over here, we got Sparrow, a.k.a. Mike. <laughs> and right over here, we have Podcast Man, also known as Anthony. That's it, And man. today, <laughs> we're talking about... <laughs> and today, we got a little treat for you guys. We're talking WandaVision. WandaVision. So, little heads up. Spoiler alert. There's going to be a little... Mm, definitely a spoiler alert so stay tuned i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say this since you didn't get to talk a lot last episode you'll be like tonight's moderator you'll you'll put everyone in check and everything fine <laughs> you didn't get to talk a lot last episode i felt bad <laughs> um so what do you want to talk about first justin <sighs> oh you're actually calling me out you little shit <laughs> 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 all right all right so finally caught up I'm on the latest episode, what was it, 8, 7? Mm-hmm. And pff, definitely was upset. Happy, but upset. And also like, ah, they finally called Wanda by her actual mutant name, the Scarlet Witch. So I was actually kind of excited for that. What were your guys' thoughts? Go ahead, Mike. Dude, I was... As far as not being named for the longest time in all of those movies, I mean, everybody, like, just assumes that, like, she is her. This is her name mm-hmm. and everything. But for the first time, like, after Iron Man's getting called Iron Man, Hulk's being called Hulk, and everybody else is being called the name, finally she got her name, and it was really cool. And, I mean, mm-hmm. the way that they did it was, like, so new and earnest that it was, like, totally believable, too. Yeah. Because just, like, Someone just being like, oh, you're dark, so, and you wear red a lot, so you're the Scarlet Witch. It was just like, I'm this because I'm that. You're this, so that means you're that. And yeah. you're like, okay, that's what means makes the title make sense. Yeah. Um, these first eight episodes, man, I mean, up until this eighth episode, man, it's been honestly a roller coaster of things, man. From one theory to another, you're always bouncing everywhere, man. It's just there, there's really no way to figure out how this will end. And even when you think you know, they like throw you mm-hmm. uh, opposite direction. It's like, nope, we're going this way. You thought that way, we're going this way. And so it, it puts you back to the cutting board again where you just like got to figure out all your theories and who's who and everything. Uh, especially, I, I really liked the episode. Eight. I, I loved the episode a lot, though, because it was pretty much a... Uh, a Wanda origin story that we we've only ever heard of, but we've never actually seen. You know what I mean? So we got to see True. her getting you know the missile with with Stark and how that happened, and then notice Agatha pretty much says like, "Oh, well, that one didn't blow up. It's almost like you stopped it. You so, put a hex on it. Yeah. So it's like, put, is, uh, did Wanda? She was said she the a odds mut- at hex. Is that leading more into mutants and X Men right there? Because I mean, mm. that's pretty much in a way setting that universe up. Because of course, if anyone knows mutants, a lot of these mutants, pretty much all these mutants, are born with their powers and what's known as the mutant gene. So are they slowly kind of trying to introduce that a little bit more? Maybe she's had her powers and only the Mind Stone enhanced them. Who knows? You know, I mean, mm. there was a lot to look at this episode. I mean, I love the TV references. We've seen all the TV shows played out, and it was in the, the dad's suitcase. That was really cool. Um, I loved overall just the trauma you saw Wanda go through from when she was a kid all the way to, like, now. It's just sad. You you feel for her, man. I think this was also, like, another maybe um, a way to kind of address that situation in, in, in the real world, you know, when people have, like, a past trauma of some sort and how they cope with it. Like, I, I really like the message they sent out right there, which I thought was pretty cool. But what about you guys? I mean, like, I personally, like, when, I mean, usually the normal, like, what is it, origin story trope, I mean, the what sets mutants apart from the, the other heroes is usually the other heroes it's a uh, cause and effect right uh peter parker got bitten by radioactive spider-man um hulk got stuck with the gamma rays um tony getting stuck in um let's say what turkey or afghanistan thor having yeah. to prove to his dad he's actually worthy right so it's mm-hmm. like it's the first hero or villain depending on how this is going right um that had her powers 
before everything happened. And I'm assuming that they're leaning toward the mutant gene because if I remember correctly, um, the mutant gene is like one out of like whatever thousand right. people. Have it. And it comes out when there's some sort of either you're super angry, you're super sad, you're super this or that. Um, A stress situation. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they're leaning toward that. She's not only one of a thousand that like the mutant gene came out when she was in a stressful situation, but she's also one of us like one in what 4.7 million or billion of Mm -hmm. wizards categories or with wizards categories where you're like, Oh crap, you're the best of both worlds right now. So like I, I thought it was really cool and I like I, I feel like they're they're creeping, crawling, taking baby steps to bring in the mutants out and then I'm really really kind of fingers crossed that the more mutants come to play this next episode. So Yeah. And the ex- like like the, the episode eight, just like how they said, Oh, I sent fake Pietro and you gobbled Pietro. it up. I was like, Bah But if you no, but if you paid attention she mm-hmm. said she only used the eyes and the ears. Now, how he has his speed, they've never explained that. And Agatha mm. said she wasn't behind that at all. So I'm curious, but I don't want to get anyone's hopes up in case of the fact that, yeah, that's not that's not who we think it is from X Men. You know, it's like they just kind of threw that in as a curveball. It'd be funny if it turned yeah. out he was Nightmare. I mean, <laughs> or someone else. You know, but well, yeah, I've been. been it it could also have been like. It could also have been like something of her creation, just like she didn't really mean to create the whole hex. Yeah. But by doing so, just like she automatically assumed it was her brother. So now she thinks, oh, superpowers, great. Right. The the one thing I did like in this episode, too, was when you actually saw her go to Westview after she visited uh, Vision at Sword, saw him all torn mm-hmm. apart, couldn't feel uh, him, and then she had that like map. It like said this is our future or something like that. Uh, yeah. From a, a note well, it wasn't Vision. a map. It was a deed. It was a deed. Yeah. Yeah. And it was in Westview. Now this is where I'm confused about Westview right now because in the very like I think episode four it was when Monica Rambeau and all them came in. The cops said they were from a town called Eastview, and Westview mm-hmm. looked like it was there, like before Wanda like took over but then like it was her rage that took over so are we going to get an explanation if Westview is actually real or not or like well all like that's why I'm saying this next episode needs to be at least an hour because there's still so much they left out last episode they still got to explain like the post credit scene with Monica and and fake Pietro it's like okay where's that going Vision and Darcy they still are on their way over there like where are they at now we have White Vision in the last episode that was revealed so like What's going to happen with that? Are we going to see, you know, Sword Vision versus Wanda Vision? I'm excited for that. If they actually do that, that'd be pretty cool. Like, yeah. I, I, well, I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel that, like, Westview is there. But it got, obviously, like, with Wanda going through, it got, um, like, clouded around. Right. And the cops think in their head that, like, it all they have is East View, and when like the what is it the the I'm calling it like a circus tent. Right. The, what what uh what happens that Wanda does like when the circus mm. tent goes away? I'm pretty sure the cops are going to be like, oh yeah, there's Westview. It's been there all along. And what I didn't picked up and noticed when I was watching the episode, it just seemed that like after the blip, that like everybody in the town of Westview was in disarray had no point of living they were sad had no like basically like no life worth living of doing things so it's like it's almost like a weird way where it's like wanda came there and she kind of saved the town in a weird way yeah it was like and um i think that was the thing I, purpose yeah you were starting to see that a lot in this area too um when they were kind of like everything was going it looked like it was going out of business the town was kind of run down yeah. and it was just it looked abandoned and then that's when Wanda came in and saw like all the people that were kind of like, yeah, they looked like they were suffering from like losing a business or losing a loved one or whatever. 
and they were just kind of walking around like, oh, then what are we going to do? Like, I put up these posters, but what, what much is it going to do, you know? So I think Wanda, with her feeling sad, and she could probably maybe feel the sadness around her, that it just caused her to, like, make this fake world, um, like the reality show style, which I thought was really cool, especially when they show them in the black and white uh, world, and, like, Wanda is all red. But then, like, what interests me a lot is my question was how was vision back like okay sword has his body so like w- what happened did want to take him and like kind of reanimate him or but then you find well, out she actually pretty much projected it was in her, him yeah in her like it was from the mind stone the power of the mind stone that she she's got on top of her power she just pretty much made a vision based around like her feelings and stuff yeah because if you go back into like um was it like just like X Men lore? Wanda, she's a was it a type X, type ten? Like she has no limit to her power. Right. She's the, one of the Omega. What is it? Omega. Omega. Omega level. Yeah. yeah. She's that yeah. level where there's she's universe destroying or universe creating level. Right. Just Alpha like Omega how, level. Yeah, she's like that top tier. So it's just like going from there. She has a whole lot more potential that she's just not tapping into and then this big stress moment of her feeling alone uh like she just lost everything just like she lost all control and just created because like just when you see her she like when she builds a house she's already losing it and then once the house is finally built she finally like calms down and just the heck just explodes from within her and then just spreads around the town and that's when she's like looking like vision and then she, next yes, scene my cuts and she's black and white <laughs> freaking show it's, it's like i said when, when you think it's one thing it like turns you to another different thing um because yeah, oh go for it i was gonna say so, like so this this whole idea of the the new incarnation of vision uh in mm-hmm. this post credit scene i know we're kind of bouncing all over the place with this episode but there's so much to break down um so obviously if you guys are not familiar audience at home or you two as well uh white vision first made his first appearance in west coast avengers um in 1989 uh and it was hank pym and wonder man who were like the ones behind bringing vision back so uh obviously we don't have a wonder man and hank pym's elsewhere doing other things so this carnation from the mcu is going to be like a sword with mixed with wanda's magic that brought this vision to life from what it looked like. Um, I have some theories as to whose voice we're going to be hearing, though. Well, it's uh, it's Sword and um, Stark technology. Stark technology. Well, it was also well, it was the magic from the technology, though. That's what he. Yeah, did. that it was like it was like the magic, the Stark technologies. So they're like they just needed that drone to power them up or repower them. Yeah, I think it was the the, the magic in that power because that was like the only thing that actually I think came back alive and they have that was from the outside. So they were just because she that. dragged it out. Yeah, she dragged it out of the the hex. Um, <laughs> one person has been credited in this show that has not made an appearance yet, and it would make sense if he came back, uh, especially with this new vision. And that is um, Ultron. Ultron yeah. is casted in here, and I think when Vision, when we first hear him talk, the new Vision, I think we're gonna hear Ultron's voice. <laughs> It's gonna be a uh, Michael uh, Spader. Oh my gosh! Yeah, Spader is he is. That's gonna be that's gonna be deep cuts, dude. dude. If I uh, at, like that kind of gives me chills. <laughs> Just think about it though. Hayward had this entire plan where, for the longest time, people actually thought were theorizing that Hayward was Ultron because in one, I think, animated show, he actually like can turn into a human and stuff like that. He was able to transform into a human, so they thought right. Ultron. What, uh, what is it, the uh, life model decoy? Yeah. 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 So, like, he can he can kind of make himself look, like, very human-like and stuff. So, um, people were thinking Hayward was Ultron, when in reality, it looks like Hayward might, might be someone a lot more sinister than we think. I have a theory maybe Hayward is probably... Well, a funny theory was brought up for me and Sammy today. Uh, what if Hayward... Is actually reincarnated uh, as as Red Skull because Red Skull's soul. Was well, he's free. still on the Red Skull is still up on that 
Planet. He was freed. Remember, he was freed. Yeah, the emo boy. He's freed twice. <laughs> um, so his soul is free. What if he came back to Earth while uh, the first time it happened, maybe possessed uh, Hayward somehow, took over Sword so he can build a weapon and kind of bring back the rise of Hydra? It'd be cool, but I'm not, like, there's a part of me that's kind of like over Hydra. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like, maybe it's, like, kind of selfish of me, but I'm, like, I want new people, new stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just, okay. I, I, like, I want like, new toys. Well, that's why I kind of like what they're doing with Falcon Winter Soldier, because, like, uh... The Hydra's never dead. Chop off one head, three grow in its place. Yep. Right, yeah. Um, But Baron Zemo's kind of working for himself. Yeah, like, he's his own thing, you know what I mean? So that's why I think it's cool. I mean, I, I'm, we're probably going to get nods to Hydra or whatever, or, or, you know, Zemo will probably talk about Hydra, but Zemo is, like, his own gang. And like he's got people that it looks like they follow him and stuff. So I'm I'm excited to see that aspect in that show. Because well, uh, Zemo it becomes the leader of the Thunderbolts. Yeah. And then like I I mean I can't wait for that, but that's future talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like what was it? Uh, I'm trying to like, dude, I'm still like up on that like freaking Michael Speeder voice of like <laughs> vision because that'd be like. Because, you know, we're all expecting Paul Bentley to sound robotic. Yeah. You know? And then, then it's just Ultron. And, I yeah, and, and like, as soon as she speaks, because obviously they're probably going to hold on to speaking until the fighting portion. And when you hear... I don't James, even think that. I think when he first wait, steps it, in, he's going to, like... It's James Spader, right? James, James Spader, Spader or yeah. Michael Spader? Yeah. If you hear that voice, and there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be like, Fuck. <laughs> he's back i didn't think right. he was coming back and, and it's one of those situations where like we're fucked, we're fucked. <laughs> like i even yeah. heard like even going on guardians of the galaxy mission breakout like w- because they have like that ultron bot in his collection and when yeah. you, if you ever hear a talk it's not james spader i'm like oh man this one sucks i want spader's voice right <laughs> but well uh, that's a lot with disney stuff they don't have the main actors yeah. saying like the stuff that are the animatronics. The only ones that do are the ones that are right there on the screens, not on the like Stitch's Great Escape. I fucking hate it because that was like Tom Stitch's Hanks' brother does all like the toys and stuff for him, so he yeah. might have been the Disney attraction. You know what I mean? Um, well, rolling it back, kind of going like from your like theory and everything. Like, I do feel that they're trying like i mean this is kind of like my thing is like they're trying to make um hayward be something so everybody can put a finger at him but Mm. sometimes where it's like there's instances that go on where like someone would react to it right so this episode the recent one i'm just trying to like put the sequences in my head the recent one um wanda she Mm -hmm that freaking glass that's like literally like inches away from him and the cat doesn't move an inch he doesn't react at all right no he he like like, jerks back like "Mm." for me i would i would be more susceptible to believe that like ultron is in hayward and like a lot life equate model like skin of him because if i remember correctly when in this episode, you see Wanda go into his office, and he's like, I'm director of S.H.I.E.L.D. But when Monica Rambeau goes into his Sword. office, he says, I'm the assistant acting director of S.W.O.R.D. So he doesn't say that he's like the boss right. to her. So it's like we saw two scenes that are technically truth scenes, right? Because we're seeing it from like the eyes of the older. We're in the reality, like the now reality. It might honestly be around the same time, too, because if you're planning up sequences of events like okay end game happens they do the funeral i would say the right. funeral would be like a couple maybe like a week or so after i think one vision i, I kind of have a question on that one because how did sword go through wakanda borders to get vision's body that's always been my biggest thing too is like okay I would I like I understand in infinity war when that happened you were speechless you were shocked i give it about a month maybe a couple months to just kind of cope with that and that won't even help but like at that same time no one thought like hey let's put vision's body in wakanda it will be safe you know like let's well, that, that's here. what i thought like what happened like you know the the wakandan people right his body and they put it in the you know where shuri does her 
for uh, technology. So, like, that's my only thing that they haven't really tapped on. Maybe next episode they'll do Hayward's life origin. That would be good because we kind of got two origins in this one. We got Agatha's and then we got yeah that Salem, Massachusetts scene too. That was dope. That was good. Yeah, that was yeah. that that slap, dude. Like it was, it was to me. It was like watching a different movie, and I was just like, oh my god, you can make a movie just on Agatha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm down. I actually kind of have a little question. I don't know if it like you guys caught it, so. I think it was episode four or three. The girl that gets launched out of um, launched out of the hex, the one that goes back in to help Wanda. Yeah. When they show her the film showing how Wanda broke in and stole Vision's body. It's fabricated. Yeah, you see her like it looks like she just like stole it and like went in there and like takes the body. But from there, you see her just she like kills the touches, cards too. Yeah, she just touches his head and then walks away. The he leaves the body behind, so it's just like he just like completely altered it. So technically, in the real world, I, you know what? Now that you bring broke. that up, I'm thinking about that. Yeah, there was <laughs> video footage of her still in the body, yeah. wasn't there? Well, I yeah. kind of have a theory on that one. Uh-huh. That like I mean, from what we know right now, with like being in the reality and, and seeing the truth, the only thing that Wanda broke was the door lock and the glass in that place. <laughs> Everything else, she like picked up the body and bounced out. Yeah. Uh, but like I, th- this, like my whole theory is that like back in 1600s, um, I think Agatha's boy toy love interest and all that stuff is Mephisto and that she used magic back then to fall in love and to have like a happy ending or something like that and that's the reason why she got caught and she got caught from all of her sister witches and her mom tried to take her down obviously through the power of love she was able to defeat the sisters and defeat her mom because they didn't understand but like with a little bit of the once like show magic comes with a price and i feel like mephisto is in the bunny right now and so she needs to devise some sort of a plan and um be coincidentally living right next to wanda in the plot of land and to use wanda or use the scarlet witch because she already reincarnated vision that hopefully she can change the bunny and reincarnate Ralph, which is really Mephisto. Which mm. Mephisto will be the evil villain. I was also thinking, too, of, as far as Evan Peters' role, um, what if he's playing Nicholas Scratch, who's Agatha's son? Um, that's really it's his... More, it's more going... Story. It's more leading to that. Yeah. Around. But I'm still trying to figure out the whole... Like, how he had speed, though, because... They did bring that up. It's like how he had speed, but Agatha never said that she gave him the speed. So like it was blue. So so was that a Wanda thing? Because when I Monica think, Rambeau walked in, she got her powers. So I think we I think we all thought that because he's using the speed force and it's blue looking, that like oh it's Quicksilver. But I think the blue trails and all that stuff is all magic, like fabricated. We think we we think we see someone running at super speed, but he's actually not. That's what I that's what I think. But then, like you know, the kids obviously have the uncle's powers, so I'm I'm not really I'm not really buying the kids being alive at all. I'm a, weird. I'm I'm hoping, and this is gonna sound a little dark, uh, but this is how it happened in the comics that we see Mephisto essentially kill them to become Mephisto. That would be very dark and go to a really dark place, but our human sacrifices to be the bad. Yeah, if like if it's gonna set up something bigger and a darker universe this time around for Phase Four, I'm kind of all for it. Like I want to see that happen because it's so comic accurate. You know what I mean? I mean Thanos was like going from planet to planet, killing people, doing mass genocide. So right. I mean, why wouldn't they do this <laughs> this again? Yeah. <laughs> They saw how well that worked out, so he was we'll only killing half of the the planets. Well, Thanos didn't really have powers; he had the glove. 
Yeah, Thanos was. <laughs> that's why I was source. always kind of confused, especially with um, when he took on the Hulk, and they're like, "Yeah, he didn't use any stones." I'm like, "But he's not that strong." <laughs> but I think he was using like more. Uh, uh, what is it, Muay Thai? Right. Where it was, he was using the Hulk strength as like a weakness to him. Yeah. So that's when he was like doing all the the hits and the counter stuff. Hulk was like, well, he like, beat the shit out punch. of Hulk and scared the fuck out of him. Yeah, he was like, he's like, I can't do Infinity shit. War. If you look at Infinity War, when he smacks him down and starts beating him up, he does that to uh, Captain America film. too, doesn't he? Because he's trying to hold the glove, and then all of a sudden he like punches him, and then he like punches him again on the floor. Hmm. And then from right there, the Hulk just wouldn't come out. It's like, come on! And he goes, no, and then <laughs> back into the body. But uh, so. yeah, I mean, I don't know, and I, I really want to see a lot with this next vision. Uh, and I'm hoping this is a way they can bring Paul Bettany back for future films as well. I have a theory, mm. maybe that like if Ultron is in that body, uh, they're gonna have to figure out a way. Cause everybody, and I saw another cool theory about this today too, uh, on TikTok, and someone was saying like, um, you really think Ultron is that stupid to not back himself up? before he got shut out of the internet into something else. And I was like, yeah, he's pretty out there with, you know, his AI system. I would think he'd be smart enough to back something up for, for something in the future. This can play big time for this role. And I believe more your theory, yeah. think about it more, because, like, who would be the best payback than the guy that killed you in Age of Ultron? Killed your brother and then pretty much what destroyed if, your, your freaking your home. <laughs> Cause you, cause you know how, um, was it Ultron was defeated by Vision when he just got like zapped in the right. head. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, maybe he was just sitting and waiting for like the best opportunity to make a freaking comeback. So I'm like, I really like where you're going on that one. Like it gives me yeah. a chance, and it will give yeah. if it happens. Like I said, Vision's if like the first thing we see, Ultron. the first thing we see in that is that post credit scene pretty much picked up from where it left off, and mm -hmm. all we just hear is James Spader's voice. I am legit gonna lose my shit. But also too, Dude, I'm gonna, you're get, you're definitely gonna be one of the first texts. I'll be like, "Yo, homie, you right?" <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> you know, it'd be funny is for this uh, for the next episode. We should record mm -hmm. our reactions as to who we think the the secret cameo is, and then if James Spader does pop up. Well, there's like, a part of me that's like, I mean, it, it might make me tear up, and it's one of the reasons why I'm wearing the shirt right now. Is that like? If it is James Spader or if it is Paul Bentley or something, I feel like it's going to be kind of like a Terminator thing where it's like he's going to be robotic. He's going to be a bad guy. And I feel that like Tony backed himself up to a way that like, let's say Ultron does have a, a way of getting into, you know, vision that we might hear Tony Stark again. I was gonna say, like, what if instead in the dark, of what if as like of, AI, yeah, what if instead of it was instead of Ultron, it was actually Tony Stark's voice in that thing, like RDJ. I would be like, dude, I can't believe they actually got him to come back and do this, man. That was probably the easiest paycheck for him. Because I mean, there there was that scene where like the both of the AI start fighting when it's like Jarvis and, and Ultron. So I have a feeling like maybe Ultron is gonna be kind of coming out here, and it's gonna be the White Vision. And I'm kind of hoping that. The white vision stays you know with the uh, with avengers and everything going forward um because it does have like a little bit more comic book accuracy he does have the diamond on his chest yeah. and like i'm kind of hoping that there was like like with uh with rdj with um with tom holland right. doing classes and everything like i'm hoping that he like he comes up and does like an ai fight you know <laughs> Freaking, it's going to be like that scene from uh, Winter Soldier. It's Wanda going to look at Vi Vision, and then he's going to turn around, who the hell is Vision? <laughs> like, in, in my head, I kind of thought about the scene because I was just like, oh, this would be kind of cool if there's, like, a fight going on, right? And it's White Vision versus, you know... Wanda that, Vision. Because, obviously, there's, it's going to be a four-people um, match. Well, let's see. You got... It would be it's Agatha Vision versus, Vision, versus... Agatha yeah. versus... Um, Wanda, Wanda. Scarlet Wanda and then Photon. Photon, I think, would verse Evan Peters if he is someone big. Right, yeah. So it's probably going to be a six-person fight. And not to mention the kids will be probably fighting too. Right. And so, like, in and my watch head, it I'm stop like... stop right there and say this will continue in the movie. Right. We'll be like, damn it, Marvel! 
please stand by. Um, what is it? It would be funny if we hear the signature ACDC black, back in black, yeah. and it's like, and it's white vision that's like, what the hell's going on? You then, know? then you hear, then you hear Spider Man. Oh, it. I love Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> But he's like the he's like the only one that hears the music, which would be kind of funny because it's like we hear the music, the tours, he hears the music, and no one, everybody's looking at him like, what the hell is he doing? And he's like, he's like, hey, buddy, you know, or something. Hey, like, Ultron, he, like, you miss me? <laughs> like he's like, seems like you have a bug in your system. Let me clear this up for you, you know, or something. You'd be like, oh my god. And the fucking then they have like a simulated fight between Ultron and Iron Man inside of his head, and we get to see that. Yeah. Oh, dude lose my shit you just see like iron man in one of his suits and then it's ultron in his form from age of ultron oh my god that'd be so on like dope. a on like a tron like grid <laughs> we just we <laughs> just like took the theory level and just put it on a whole new level and who's ever watching is gonna watch this and go none of that happened <laughs> i know right it's not gonna happen but it kind of hey, cool one can, one can, one we can got like an hour and 15 minutes so they can make it happen <laughs> hey one can fantasize right <laughs> One thing I definitely like how they did with this in comparison to like the movies, as we know, the first three episodes were slow. It was kind of like, all right, what the hell's going on? Yeah, that was already right there an hour and a half. That would have been half a movie already. We're in episode eight, so that would have been almost what two movies already. Yeah. So right here, just building up to the next. Well, what they say it's supposed to be one season, then a movie. So it's leading up into something, right? Yeah, it's leading well, actually, up into something. So it's just now. It's just like, what movies are going to be leading into? WandaVision has been setting up a lot for, from what I've seen, mostly Strange Captain Marvel. Right? Yeah, I've been yeah, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel and Doctor two, Strange, right? Doctor Strange, and then Doctor Strange is going to be with Spider Man as well. So pretty much Spider Man yeah. if they're doing the multiverse. Um, and Age of Ultron has been kind of like the main focus around the whole thing. But yeah, I mean. Did you any, also the book that uh let's talk about a little bit about that book that Agatha has. Everybody is calling right now. All the fans we think it's the dark hold. Um did you guys notice something though? In Doctor Strange there was one book missing from Oh the yeah, yeah. Ones, I remember that. Uh library and a lot of people believe it's the dark hold. And it's uh, inside a hexagon. Yeah, it was inside a hexagon too. So has yeah. Marvel been planning the dark hold since 2016 like i i think i mean if they're planning on endgame like 11 years in advance i i, I think that like once they got the endgame in like a uh, story at five years in that out of the 11 years that they had it they're like all right what's going to be future so like i think i think disney marvel already just, just thinking about that done. can you imagine like you get told, okay, I'm pretty sure Kevin Fahey probably tells like a group of people in a meeting, right? As to like, okay, we're going to start here in phase four. This is where we need to end in phase four. There's a lot of projects from now until that point. I think we've only gotten like half of phase four's projects released. There's still like another other half. They have everything mapped out. They're like, okay, we're going to do this, this, and this. Uh, we got to make sure this happens in that film and then happens in that film. But pretty much you have creative freedom to do it. I would love and I would so risk like 10 years of my life of just non-disclosure agreements just to sit in that meeting and see how that goes because I would love to see that. Well, I did the I did the math because I'm a numbers person and right. Cavity knows this. And, like, it's weird because, like, with what they're projecting, that once this is kind of finally done, which I don't think this is going to be done with all these billion dollars, my daughter's going to be 18 and I'm going to be 47. Fucking weird, right? <laughs> I don't even know how how, how many years 30. is that? Because <laughs> they said that they had like in the very beginning, what was it when they did Avengers one and stuff like that? They were like, oh, we have this amount of uh, numbers, and I've always had it in my head. We're like, I'm gonna be 46, 47. My daughter's gonna be 18, and I'm like, this is fucking weird. Uh, and, like, uh, like the the main like stories are gonna be done, and it's gonna be weird to like look back on it. And I I really hope someone took like a freaking like either a digital camera or a real camera and like shows like the, the bubble thinking, you know, in that like whatever room that they have, the Area 51 room of like yeah, ID. Marvel. <laughs> right. <laughs> they go down to like, they go down like 13 stories underground into a bunker, soundproof <laughs> and everything, and they just discuss their plan in there. Because <laughs> it, it, it would just be kind of cool just to see 
you know, like a time date on like, okay, then we did this, then we did this. And it's like, it was pretty done, you know, like, no, I've always, I've always been fascinated with that though. Like, okay, Kevin Feige already knows what he's doing for phase six and we're not even done with probably phase four. Kevin Feige is like, we're doing this to this in phase four. All right, I got that. I want to do this, this, and this in phase five. All right, let me start working on phase six. And it's like, not to mention like, we just got Fox properties. Yeah. We got Netflix properties and it's just like, and not to mention all the other not so popular characters they haven't even introduced yet. You know what I mean? Like right, Mi- they got Ms. Uh, what was it? Ms. Marvel. They got Marvel's Sp- coming in. They like it's nuts right now. And like Hawkeye, I- what's coming in from Hawkeye? They're introducing. Oh yeah, them. yeah, Katie Bishop. Yeah. Like I, I feel that like the the writers that are doing their job and like oh my god, give them all the fucking money, dude. Like God, like. If there was a Venmo or whatever or a tip line, I'd be like, yo, I'm throwing five bucks to this person, writer. Like, thanks, bro. You you made Vision white, bro. Here's five dollars. Go get your. You've dust. only answered every comic book nerd's prayer, <laughs> right? <laughs> We've been waiting for this since Vision came on screen, and we're like, okay, it's only a matter of time before we get this white Vision. Like, if I if I know the the name, be like, oh, that was that was Joey out in accounting. I'd be like, all right, I'm a I'm a Venmo Joey out in accounting for the, giving that idea. Go get yourself a coffee, homeboy. Uh, here's 20. Get the lunch on me. <laughs> right. Um, another theory or another thing I've been hearing too is if anyone watched Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., I didn't watch it too much. I think I watched like the first season and the season that Ghost Rider was on because I love Ghost Rider. Robbie. Um, there's talks that Quake might be making an appearance in this show for the last episode. That makes sense. That'd be cool. That would be really cool because then that really kind of fortifies and really – outside of phil colson other people that have been in the mcu you know i feel like that show was popular but like it didn't really focus too much on like mcu's timeline rather than its kind of own thing if that makes sense yeah i mean when i was watching it to me it was more like uh black yeah and they were really a lot behind the scenes i honestly like when i'm not gonna give it a spoiler but when a certain character died like i was just kind of like bored with it because i was like "Ooh, i was really like i enjoyed this character in the show right and then it was just like we're doing this we're doing that now we're over here and i was just like man i'm kind of getting bored like <laughs> I, I missed it when it was more like we're co- like we're men and black cops and we're looking for all of these like you know people with powers and stuff like that we I mean, know what they tried doing too is because that inhuman show didn't do so well so they tried really hard to introduce it into agents of shield more yeah. So that was kind of like, yeah, you're kind of trying to mash two things, one project that didn't work out, one project that's making you money on TV. So I like to think uh Inhumans was probably Disney Marvel's first flop. I was so like when they announced it was going to be a movie at first and there was talks of Vin Diesel playing Black Bolt, I was like, "Yes, cast that. I think that would make a good Black Bolt." And then the one thing I always heard people said is, well, how is he going to be Groot and Black Bolt at the same time? He's in the Marvel Universe. I'm like, one's a voice, one doesn't speak at all. <laughs> it makes Probably uh, Sackville wouldn't let them. I know, man. It's That would have been – I think Inhumans honestly would have been a phenomenal – not Inhumans. Yeah, Inhumans would have been a phenomenal film. if uh, What writers. was it? By Sackville's rules, they would have had to pay him double and he would have been just like jumped up to Robert Downey Jr.'s play. Uh, yeah, they probably don't want to spend that more money than they have to. Um, but I, I think that's the movie that never was, man, and would have been really cool to see. Really cool. Um, so going forward now, what do we think episode nine? Where we think that this is going to end? What's going to happen? Theories, thoughts, going f- towards episode nine. I feel like it's going to pause and then go towards like a like a meanwhile, but going towards back to. Oh fuck! I always forget her name. Monica Rambo. Going back to Monica, and her fighting the knockoff version of Pietro. So I feel like it's gonna go right there, and as well as outside the hex. Is I feel honestly it's gonna be because you know how like episode seven it left Vision out, like he was getting blocked from coming in, like going over to the house. So I feel like it's going to be a continuation of that and as well of uh, the fight with Miss Rambo. What if you just see Magneto this, fly in? 
Because as, as far as we know, Vision's in the sky on his way to that. Yeah. And Darcy is still in the well, tree. <laughs> like, That was mean. Right. It didn't show her it didn't show him leaving the truck. Yeah, he flew well, out. Yeah, he's in the trailer. He like he went up, he's like, fuck this, uh, what is it, reality show? Yeah, he heard his whole life story oh. told to him and then he was like, Okay, I know everything, I'm gonna go see Wanda. Darcy's like, He like yeah, threw I'll off of his he threw off his mic and I thought it was freaking hilarious. I was like, you know what the hell it is? Yeah. Like <laughs> But um what if just out of the bloom, just funniness happens and Deadpool appears, just starts commentating the entire thing and fro- breaking the fourth wall. That'd be hilarious. See, like, in my head, like, I had... I should have said it out loud to Bree, but, like, I was like, wouldn't it be funny if, like, the camera would turn over, right? At like, And this is, like, the very last episode, like, the end credit scene, right? Right. And it goes into, like, a studio audience, and, and Deadpool has like popcorn. And he's like clapping his hands. He's like, "Oh my gosh, this was so awesome!" That'd be hilarious. But like, he kind of did it with this past episode where Agatha was in the audience, and I was yeah. just like, hmm. "Yeah." They but, can still they can but, still I mean, bring it in if they wanted to, you know, just for a gag. She was in the like, audience you just go trying just to watch point her to the other side, what? and Deadpool's on the other corner, <laughs> or Deadpool's the camera guy, or, or the, the the boom guy, yeah. or whatever. Hey, Wanda, yep. sounding real good. <laughs> right? Can we do the scene again? But more enthusiasm this time. You just see him behind the camera just like, I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> What's next? You're going to tell me Deadpool kills the Fox universe? And that just gives out his movie right there. Right. Dude, if, that's gonna, if, that, if they were to do that as a movie, though, I would absolutely love that because Deadpool kills the Marvel universe was both funny and like really awesome. <laughs> So to him to kind of just kill off all the Fox universe, and imagine if they can get Hugh Jackman to come back, like that would be the movie right there. Hugh Jackman really? is, like the mail, is the mailman in uh, Westview. <laughs> um, well, that's what um, Ryan Reynolds has been trying hard on to get Hugh Jackman to come back. Yeah, what if I don't think Hugh Jackman's fighting. <laughs> that's what Deadpool three was too, was them and him and Logan. But I don't know how much I believe that because he after Logan he was just done. But Ryan Reynolds probably is pretty. Persuasive. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, technically, he's at in a fucking Deadpool costume. What was it? We're twenty years, fifteen years um, before Logan, so technically, we could still have Wolverine come into play. Now, what? What does was Logan like its own universe, or was that actually Logan was twenty forty seven? But it was it was after the events of the original three X Men, then, or? Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you remember, um, what was it? Uh, Days of Future Past. Future Past, and then Japan. They kind of debunked a lot of shit and changed the the history. Right. Mm-hmm. I was so really technically, confused. Logan is around. Technically, just... X Men Fox Universe was confusing as fuck. <laughs> well, yeah. Like I, I would like to think if they're gonna bring in Logan or something like that. Like obviously, they got to do the the bring back mutants. Like she's got to word it. You, you know, know who I did like though as Sabretooth was uh what's his name Li- uh, Lee Schreiber. Oh, I, dude, I was more of a Tyler Main fan. I love Lee dude. He was just like he he was just like one of those like assholes, but like he was sinister too. Because it was uh what was it WWE? Yeah, that, uh, Tyler Main was a part of, and I was like, yeah. dude, Tyler Main for Sabretooth? That's fucking dope. Yeah, but Live Schreiber, I, I I really liked him, and I thought they were gonna bring him back for Logan as like an old man Sabretooth. That would have been cool. They were supposed to, but I think he was doing uh, Ray Donovan. Yeah, and like the schedule couldn't like he was supposed to have a cameo in it. He was pissed too. He was. Oh, like, it's just upset. You never see Wolverine come in his actual old school leotard. Like you see, like it. It's well, you know why Easter they did that right? right there at the end? What? Um, they're so assholes. Kind of... No, well, let's be honest though. I mean, if you were to put that on to Hugh Jackman, I'm gonna be honest, it wouldn't look good. I think he's his Wolverine in general is notified with the tank top and the jeans. That's, I don't know, man. Like Disney Marvel has been giving us the suits. And yeah, was, oh. I mean, with some people you gotta modify. Like I was telling my friends, like with some suits, it just doesn't work on certain actors, and I think it would kind of look a little funky in some cases. But if done True. right, they can they can do it and pull it off. But like, I I think if they I did definitely it more agree like with in that. A Captain America way. Like where it's like, yeah. I definitely, I definitely agree with that statement, 
just because of the fact like if you look at like the comics and the cartoon version he's short that wolverine is short and <clears throat> yeah yeah he's a four nine if i remember correctly yeah and Hugh jackman was like and this six one something. he was tall tall freaking broad so that's why the the tank top yeah. and the jeans worked for hugh jackman because that was like his look i did like though on x-men um what was it apocalypse or yeah apocalypse when they showed his first appearance was mm-hmm. that apocalypse <laughs> yeah uh, they showed his first appearance uh, when he was in the the Weapon X program of with the helmet and everything. That was really cool. That was dope. That was dope, man. But I live for those kind of Easter eggs. So it's looking like it's gonna shit. Be- I mean, it it looks to me that like this is gonna be a scramble, <laughs> yeah. like a football term. And I don't use really football terms because I don't watch football terms. But I mean, I don't. But I feel like this is gonna be a royal rumble until like the third act. And then some shit's going to happen, and we're going to be like, it's Disney Marvel, so we're all going to be in the third act like, what the fuck? I tell you what's going to happen. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man going to come in and look at Wanda and go, I'm going to throw some dirt in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I, I, I mean, like we were talking about last time, like with the, the China market and stuff like that, right. and I know me and, me and Bree, we like disagree on it. Like, I don't think that they're going to do a devil character. But I think there might have like a devil from a different realm, right? Uh, like a different universe of madness, which Doctor Strange can introduce or something. Mm-hmm. But what's funny I mean, too is like China is the one that blocks all that. Yet they're famous for like a lot of artists and stuff that come out of there, you know, that do all of that. So it, it just trips me out that they're like they ban all that, but they also have like, uh, like you know, comics and stuff out there that have their artwork that is that. So I don't know why they don't censor that, you know. Uh, I, well, what would you guys think if, like, right before the fight happens, you hear Professor X's voice, just right there, like, like well, which one? Like, McAvoy or Stewart? McAvoy. These timelines are confusing. Well, because right now in this timeline, it would technically be uh, Stewart, wouldn't it? Yeah, I it would have to be. So I. Right. This is why it have to be Stewart. This is why I differ from you guys right here. I was reading an article as to you know, with Professor X and Magneto. Um, the older ones are coming toward the age of just them kind of like not maybe be able to carry a franchise for the next 15 to 20 years if they wanted to go that long. And typically the characters would be like 78. Yeah. Concentration camps. But depending on where they go, I think McAvoy and Fazbender would be the two best choices to bring into this universe because they are actors that can probably carry a franchise for 15 to 20 years. You can even see them grow older and yeah. it would go good with the X-Men. So... Especially me, because I'm a huge fan of Fazbender's uh, Magneto. I think he killed that role with the material he was given. He absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Especially when you have a new director, a new direction, like the 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 what is it? The possibilities are endless, and then they'll take care of you, and you know, like they'll they'll actually give you justice that you deserve. You know. So I think like, any two, I, it's going to be them too. Honestly, I mean, like I I I would think that they'd be like, oh wait, how much are you going to pay us? Yeah. And it increase over time. <laughs> yeah, I guess though. Uh, Marvel, <laughs> Kevin Feige was saying, or I guess someone said that they they had contacted both Fazbender and McAvoy to have meetings with them. But that could mean anything, honestly. <laughs> right. They could be casting freaking Fazbender as Doctor Doom, and I would still be okay with that. Right. <laughs> so, like, um, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm hoping. Like the way the next episode opens up, because it's like we so f- we so far know Photon, we know pretty much everybody, including um, what's his face, uh, John Woo, Jimmy and Woo. Yeah. so we know all of them. We just don't know um, Hayward. Right. So I th- like I think either what was it, Justin? brought it up that like I think they're gonna do an intro of Hayward and why he's a dick and like and kind of like go because they already had the title like what was it previously on. Right. So like I think it's gonna be like and now we're here or some whatever cheeky title. And we're gonna find out why Hayward's the way he is and it's gonna be Well it's his motive behind it. Yeah. And why and who fabricated the the uh, the video of Wanda? Like all of the reasons. I think I think it's gonna do like the reasons in the beginning. 
right. and go to like where we're at now. And then well, it time. it's also going to have to go to the point of fucking TikTok constantly send me notifications. You got new message. You got this person like your video. Um, it was random, but okay. <laughs> yeah, well, it keeps buzzing on my phone. I don't know how to ignore those notifications. Um, fuck, what was I saying? Squirrel. Um, <laughs> What's happening? What I, I have no idea. Um, squirrel, squirrel, Hayward. No, it should be great, but... Yeah, that happened. <laughs> what happened? I got tongue-tied and, like, lost my train of thought. Okay, breathe. Yeah. And go. There you go. Hayward, that asshole. Now it's going to go into his reasoning. I feel like the next episode is probably going to go into his reasoning, or the next two episodes going to go into his reasoning on why he went against the Nova Scotia law or war pact or whatever it the was. Covia Accords. There we go. Uh, <laughs> the what you call it? The Nova what? Nova Scotia. I don't know. Why. Country. I just like, yeah. Other country. Yeah. Nova Scotia. Well, because like the whole. The whole, um, the whole vision thing. You know how they said uh, Vision's will was to be destroyed, so no one can recreate him or weaponize him. Sword did and that. And then Sword <laughs> went against that, saying, "No, this was Vision's rule, uh, Vision's will, saying that we don't want to, I don't want to become somebody's weapon, or X, Y, Z." So now it's going to go into his reason on why did he disobey that now because like, they weren't just de- dismantling them they were dissecting them and then as you've seen they created the white vision so now it's like what it was seems like they were doing it for the vibranium too so that's one, what yeah. they said because he even said we're not letting you take a three billion thirty billion yeah. um dollar uh, body from us filled with vibranium so it's like he was they were doing something with it. They didn't right. see Vision as a person. They saw him as money. Mm-hmm. So now he's going to go into his accord. The Sokovia Accords, man. Mm-hmm. Which which movies have you seen? I just haven't seen Spider-Man 2 or Endgame. Yeah. They come over to the house. I'm negative, by the way. I tested negative for COVID. Huh? I tested negative for COVID. I thought I told you guys that. No? No. Someone around me was positive, and then I went to go take a test the very next day, and I'm negative. Uh, did you do the throat swab or the nose swab? Nose. Okay. I hate the throat one. Nose. I hate both of them. I've done both of them. Um, the nose one's not bad. I've done the nose test. So, I was like, right. so WandaVision Episode 9, I think we're going to see the surprise cameo, because I've been waiting, and if we don't, then I will throw my remote at my TV. Um, I, think that, I mean, I think when they said like a cameo, I mean, this is like, I mean, I'm digging what you said, but I think like because we saw him already in the previous episode, like that's his credit or something. Talking about White Vision? What? You're talking about White Vision? Which character uh, you when they, when they showed the scene of, um, of James Spader of Ultron, I think that's the reason why he was credited. I'm, I'm kind of hoping on your, your new theory. Oh, yeah, 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 for uh, his return in 9. I still think we're going to get someone because I've been hearing talks that even though that, that part came out, they're still saying that the, the secret cameo hasn't been... It might be Spader, though. But they said that this this person has never been introduced in the MCU, and that's... Right. Uh, That'd be like no on Game Spader. Yeah, and technically Vision is just an upgrade, so it's still Vision. Yeah, I mean, the part that, like, um, that people were talking about, and I'm like, I hope Paul Bentley's not cheeky like that and being like, oh, I've always wanted to work with this person. He's a da 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 because he's been, like, really wrapping it up. And I hope it's not him, <laughs> that, like, he's fighting him. That'd and that's funny. Always wanted to work with on screen. That'd be like, that's a dick move. Can you imagine do. how many hours of makeup he must have went through for both white and regular version of Vision? If they're going to have well, them both seems, on the same screen. It seems like white is easier. Like, cause I, cause I've seen the behind the scenes, how it's like a, it's a back plate that gets like glued on. And then they do the front with like a grid pattern. But like, I feel like with the white that it's like a lot easier where like, okay, now we don't have to do all of these different colors. We can just do boom, 
boom, and then like throw on the LEDs. Yeah, I think it just would be a pain in the ass for Paul Bettany to sit in the makeup chair for multiple hours for both characters just to get a fight scene. So I'll film all the white vision stuff and then go film all regular vision stuff. I feel like majority of like he'll be just doing the white vision and then like he'll have somebody else like wearing the other stuff. Yeah. And because um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when they went to the 1600s in Massachusetts, he aged um, Agatha too. If you guys noticed that, right. I was like, that's cool. They use the de aging technology. Yeah, they they're getting really good at that. Honestly, I mean, I think I loved it in Rogue One when they had the uh, not Rogue One, yeah, Rogue One. The yeah. they, they had the what was it? The governor. Tarkin. Yeah. That was cool. It, they have, um, it's Disney and Lucasfilm that it's patent pending. That um, they're the only company right now that has the aging technology. Yeah, they used it in that movie, The Irishman, too, with uh, all the you know, Leo. DiCaprio. Y'all are uh, updated with Mandalorian, right? Yeah. Nope. Okay, so I can't say anything about that. Go for it. We'll find out. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're fine. I don't want to tell you. What the whole uh, Luke Skywalker? Never mind. You already know. <laughs> it, that's why I said. Go for it. It's all over there. Yeah. You can't swipe through Instagram without seeing it. I can. That's why I like. That's why I stay. I stay like as soon as that twelve o'clock hits and like Jack and Bree like we're on we're on the couch. Jack's sleeping. I'm like I'm staying off my. Like, what is it more more likely? It's eleven forty five. I'm off my phone until yeah. like the very until I see that Georgia Peach logo. And I grab my <laughs> Yeah, and then you're messaging our chat and just like, oh my God, you guys have to watch Mando. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. That's that's the cue of do your homework. <laughs> watch the show. That's what I'm thinking yeah, about doing I'll right now. I'll be walking Wars. in. Catching up. Yeah, because uh, the Bad Batch is coming out May the 4th, and I really want to see that. So mm-hmm. It's going to be dope. For me, like, uh, I wasn't really, like, interested in the Bad Batch. I feel like they just threw it in there just for... Shit the giggles. Like, here's some here's some dudes. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, I'm more of like, oh, let me see the other stuff. Can't wait for Patty Jenkins' uh, Squadrons film. That's going to be pretty cool. That was dope. Yeah. The, what was it? Her, uh, her trailer that she did was, like, freaking... Awesome. Oh yeah, when she was on the airfield and she was talking about her dad and then she goes in yeah. on the air photos the X Wing, you're like, I almost wish that was real so I could just take off with it. I was like, What? This is dope. Okay, I'm down. <laughs> She's a good director, man, when you when you let her be, man. I think there was a lot of creative control from Warner Brothers and one and Wonder Woman eighty four, I think so, so But anyway But, but yeah, going back to Wanda, man, like it. It's like there's there's a part of me that like wants to theorize and wants to like throw this out there, throw that out there, or whatever. But like, if it doesn't happen, I'll be like, oh, bum. But like, I mean, as far as like a show and a series of, of a whole, because it was like, Bree and I we were talking like once again, and I was like, this is pretty one like pretty much one of the best like. And I still stand by it. Acting performances of Elizabeth Olsen. Right. And I, I hope she gets at least nominated for something because she's got so much range. It's scary. Um, but, I mean, it's just so, like, I was, whatever happens this next episode, like, I'm like, the ride was fun. Yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> so I'm going to miss going every week, looking for every little, watching a bunch of videos, theorizing all these things. Like, I don't think we'll get that again till Loki, honestly. Like, because like she has that feeling with that, like like Loki's gonna be like that. And I was like telling her, I was like, I was like, I feel like this one's a huge mystery, and Disney Marvel is gonna let us breathe, and they're Falcon gonna get Winter Soldier's gonna be like a action packed, right? Yeah, thing. like I feel like it's gonna be Mission Impossible, Born Identity, yeah. you know, type thing, and then we're gonna breathe on that one a bit, and then we're gonna get Loki, and Loki to me, I think I feel it's gonna be like a Back to the Future kind of fun vibe to it so i always I, I do it like back to the future meets the twilight zone there we go yeah yeah i think it's gonna be like that of, with a lot of like fun fan service stuff in between you know? i because I, I think just loki is just that type of character who will give you that like twilight zone vibe right there 
But then the Back to the Future of all the throwbacks you're going to get through the different time periods is going to be really cool. Um, so obviously they're doing D.B. Cooper, and I'm like, okay, what else have you fucked up? Yeah. <laughs> so just seeing him going through all history and just probably changing a bunch of things would be hilarious. But I am very excited for this next episode of WandaVision. I cannot wait for this next episode of WandaVision. I think it's going to it's gonna end. I hope it ends well and I hope it ends good. And I hope they secretly announce, like, hey, next week we have one last episode for you guys. Tune in to watch it. Um, right. I really think I mean, it's going to end with that to be continued next week kind of thing. I feel, this like, I feel like, um, I mean, after, like, a lot Is of this. Is this guy taking a piss right now? Oh, shit, you guys can hear me? <laughs> it's like what I'm going to ed- edit out, man. <laughs> Why would you just leave your AirPods on your desk? <laughs> well, because I want to hear what's going on. I didn't think it, they were that strongly <laughs> It's Apple products, man. You hear everything. I just hear like, okay, hold on. It sounds you like he's taking a piss. <laughs> on a roll, man. Hey, you can add it for the blooper scene for the background. That's how the, the, the episode's gonna team. start. Of just Justin, you hear Justin pissing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. See so what you're saying, Sparrow. No. Uh, dang. Where was I going on? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, like I mean. Sorry. I feel like. Uh, yeah, like this was a very cool series. Like it gave us patience, even though it was killing us. Like six days later. Yeah. Like, um, we got to see like eras again, and we, like it was kind of cool. We got to see like different portions of like America cinematography that we haven't seen in a very long time, and yeah. we got things to make it fun, things to laugh about, and like I just think it was like as us being test subjects for the very first time, and to other people who have yet to see this, like I mean my son, <laughs> like. And he'll be like, oh my gosh, this is boring. I'll be like, bro, you don't even get it. Let me go grab Malcolm in the box collection. Let me go grab. Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> all of this stuff, Dick Van Dyke show, and be like, and then I was even telling you guys that too. It's like, this episode gives like a Malcolm in the middle type vibe. And then, right. you know, shoot, episode eight, it shows her watching Malcolm in the middle. Yeah. That was I mean, cool. the, I'm like, <laughs> the little side rumor is that, um, like, once this is done, we're gonna get like, what is it? A two-hour making of show. Mm. So that that's what I was reading. Oh on. yeah, it's gonna be like the disassembled or something like that, where they're gonna yeah. talk about all the behind the scenes or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, like, if you notice, fun. Disney Plus has been doing that with all of any movie that comes out. They have a the making of on there. Everything that would be on DVD is now. On Disney right. Plus, because remember when um, you would buy a DVD, you would have the uh, the actor's commentary or director's commentary on it, and then now you have that on Disney Plus. So it's literally the DVD just saved on to a my, freaking. My platform. only like kind of like last ish hope of it all is mm-hmm. to open the door and give us mutants. Yep, <laughs> do it, and and you, you know. And I like I will be really happy. <laughs> I think they all would, honestly. <laughs> right, I, and and be like, okay, you're you're coming home. We're 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 taking care of you. You yeah. know, here's the uh, here's the nice uh, what is it? California king size bed with the therapeutic mattress. We got you guys. Like <laughs> trust. It'd be hilarious, mm-hmm. man. I've been what if like? So my theory, if they go that route, let's. Let's say, for example, they arrest. Fuck! I, why am I drawing a blank when it comes to names? Agatha. When they mm-hmm. say, for example, they capture Agatha. Oh, uh, watch! Like, if Shield gets involved or Sword, they say she's not our problem. She's um, the Sentinels' problem, or like some. What was the main group that would hunt the mutants? Uh, well, uh, that was like Robert Kelly and the Sentinels. So, no, but like, you're talking about didn't they have an order of evil? Isn't it called like the Brotherhood of Evil or something like that? No, 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 no. No, Brotherhood that's, uh, of Evil. Magnetos. Those are the mutants. Yeah, they're that's a uh, badass name, by the way. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, technically no, they're, they're the like one... the what is it? The Genosians. 
because they, they defend- no Genosians are the was from the island yeah. where Magneto creates the island and then eventually Ashley. But no, um, the ones that would hunt the mutants that would try to the Sentinels. Those were the machines, the people that owned it. Like they had a, their own organization. But watch them say, "Well, anywho, they just say like, all right, Agatha, Agatha's not our problem. It's." Oh, you're talking Sentinel's about uh, problem. Uh, Trask Technologies. Yeah. Okay. Would, Trask. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, that's their problem. So that would be right there opening the door for mutants because now they're acknowledging it. I just want one. I just want one. I just want to. I just either want to see Magneto floating in this next episode or some claws coming out. Right. Like, I mean, I, I, I personally just want to see some physical person that's coming. Mm-hmm. I would you know, even be fine with Reed Richards. Yeah, they kind of hinted a little bit out of it because they said space missions have been ground, grounded on like what was the first or second episode. Yeah. I think it was the second one. Um, Let's see what happens. In my head, I'm like, I wonder why, and I wonder why the space missions have been grounded. Um, I feel like that was like a lead into that already, but like I feel like. Uh, what is it? The the umbrella of the Wonder Vision is going to come down, obviously. And I'm hoping she says bring mutants back, like she remembers some sort of psychology. Um, oh, sorry, going back to Wonder Vision, we didn't even talk about the uh, the. It's the first time, well, actually, kind of the first time that were that it was brought up of um, mental fatigue, and. Mm. Using uh, repressed memories, um, and then we found out what the toaster meant. Yeah, we found All out the what hydra the, meanings. Yeah, we, we found out what the toaster meant. The watch meant. I feel like we only learned three out of the advertisements. Right. I think because they next, didn't mention logos. Yeah, like I, I think the next episode is we're gonna know the rest of the three. We don't know who those two people are, by the way, too, who do the commercials. Right. Yeah. Um, so I liked about that where it was like every door that she went through, it was like, uh, we were watching the advertisements, but then we knew what the advertisements meant. Yeah. I caught that too. That was cool. Cause it was just like, you know, when the first, what was it? The first missile went down, it was beeping and it was a Stark missile. And I was like, Oh, Stark toasters did the same peeping sequence did the same um thing and i was like oh okay that's what we're all about um but i just i want the umbrella to be done i'm hoping she says something of bring mutants back or bring my family back or something and we see one or maybe more like <laughs> mutants come and i like at this point i don't want to be greedy i just want one just want you know one. And, you know, and someone to give some sort of dialogue where, like, we're, we're finally back, you know, or something. Yeah. And that'd be dope. A lot of good stuff, man. I'm excited for episode nine. I think we need to film. I'm, I'm, this is your homework this week. Each one of us, when we watch WandaVision, like, towards the end or whenever you feel like there's something big that's going to be revealed, I need you guys to film it for you because I'm going to put it at the beginning of the next podcast so they can see Dude. our reactions. You, sh- you should have been in our living room because uh, me and Bree, we woke up Jack. That's how, oh. that's how excited we were for a uh, ghost vision. I'm I'm calling it, I don't, I don't really want to call him white vision. I'm going to call him ghost vision. Ghost vision. <laughs> but like, but we, we both were like, holy shit, holy shit. And yeah. we, we couldn't even like cover our like surprise. <laughs> but, all right, it's worth it. Jack woke up. Yeah, man. But that's our homework for this week. We got to do that. Right. And then send it to me, and I'll put it when we record the next one. I'll put it in the beginning of that one. But it'll be the intro to the next one. There you go, right there, ah. ladies and gentlemen. Let let us know what you guys think of your theories, uh, everything from WandaVision. Leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. Um, make sure to tune in next week when we talk about the season finale of WandaVision, and we'll see what happens if we do get a secret episode. If we don't, what does this mean for the future of Marvel? Uh, I'm your one third of your host Anthony. I got Mike, aka Sprout, and I got Justin, aka Cavities. And this is Honors Talk Podcast. We will see you guys next week.